Hello, in this quick video, we're going to take a look at the Windows Registry. The Windows Registry is a hierarchical database that consists of sections that contain information regarding the hardware, software, and applications on your system. It also keeps track of unique settings per each user that logs into a Windows computer. Prior to using the registry, Windows would store this information in what are called .ini files. Today, the registry consists of five major sections. These sections are called hives, and then these hives contain registry keys, which in turn contain registry values. There's two primary methods of modifying the registry. One is to use the Windows Reg Edit tool. The second is to use PowerShell. There is a third option called the REG tool, which is also run from the Windows command prompt. So we're going to take a look first at Reg Edit. So you can run that from a command prompt or you can run it right from your uh, search menu. So I'm just going to type reg edit and it's going to say yes. And I'm going to go ahead and bring up the registry. Now, before you do anything in the registry, I want to warn you that any change that you made is made immediately. There is no file save as. So keep in mind that you want to, before you do anything, you'd want to make a backup copy of your registry so that if something were to happen, you could import it back in. And you would do that by going File, Export, and you could just say, I want to export the registry as registry April 7. And notice it's going to save it as a .reg file. It says, what do you want to back up? You can back up an individual branch, or I can export the whole thing. All right, right now I'm not going to save anything because I'm not going to make any changes. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel. So in the registry editor, we'll take a quick look in here, you've got your computer reference and then you've got your five major hives right here. And they all start with H key. The hives are called classes root, current user, local machine, users, and current config. Each section has something different in there. For example, in H key classes root, you to see what's inside, you expand the chevron over here. And you're gonna see a lot of file extensions. And these file extensions are basically telling Windows how to open a specific program. So for example, if I want to look for EVT, I can click on EVT and over here is going to be, these are your registry keys and the types. Now we're not going to be getting into the exact understanding of this because the way Windows saves these, it saves as in binary or other encoding to make this work. Uh, easily. Now, some things you're going to be able to understand quite easily, some things you will not. But in here, you notice again as you go through, you're noticing a lot of extensions. Again, I can click on a given extension. Uh, for example, let's see, look for MP4, and I can see this one. I understand a little bit more in this one that it's a content type of video MP4, and I can just click this to expand it open with program IDs and you can see that it will list the program IDs that would open this. And again, depending on the registry key you're looking at, you may see some more information in here. The registry is not that easy to understand. As you're navigating the registry, you can see up here at the top, it's showing you the path of where you are. All right, so if I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse H key classes root. Now, H key current user and H key users. H key current user is going to represent the information that is specific to the logged in user. So if I were to expand that, these are all the settings that are relative to what I currently have set or I might set on this computer. So for example, if I go on printers and I can look in here at my defaults or my options, you can see the printers that I actually have installed on this particular um, computer for this user. Under H key users, what you're gonna see are the settings for the various users on the system. Now you're not gonna see names like John and Sue and Tom because you are looking at what are called SIDs, security identifiers. Think of this as the student ID number you might use in a college or a school or a social security number that the government really knows you by, not our names. So every user who's ever logged in, a, a registry subfolder is created under H key users where the default settings are going to be copied into from here into that new user. So what happens is when I go to sign out today, 
all my current settings will be rolled up into my current user and that current user will roll back into my SID. And then my SID changes when I log in again will be rolled up into current user. HKey local machine is probably the one that you would probably see or do the most work in. And when you go into HKey local machine, let me just close some of this out. I can see things like hardware, the SAM, which I'm not going to be able to see because the SAM is our security account manager database. That's where our local users are stored. So there's only a reference in here. That's not anything that we're going to be able to access to the registry. I can look at the software that's installed on this computer. So I can see here, I got some things from Google. I got Google Chrome installed. And so any special things that Google wants to save in the registry would be located in here. If I go down to Microsoft, because you're obviously going to see a lot from Microsoft, I'm going to go down here to Windows. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to look at current version. And under current version, I'm going to come down and show you, I knew my alphabet better, here we go, run. And these are the things, are the settings that are currently set to run automatically when Windows starts. So you can see that I have a program called GreenShot running automatically and another program called my Security Health SysTray running automatically. So if you're ever looking for some stubborn program and you're wondering why it's still loading when your computer turns on, you might want to look inside the registry. And if I don't want to load it, I can simply click on this, right click, and I can delete that if I choose what, if I choose to do that. So again, this is an area where you might want to um, take a look at from time to time. Now, you also find that when you uninstall programs that use the registry, not all program vendors do a very good job of removing all the inferences throughout the registry. And so, like for example, what if I wanted to see if GreenShot was located anywhere else in here? So what I can do is I can go to Edit, Find, and I'm going to look for GreenShot. By the way, GreenShot is a uh, clipboard editing program. It's free. It does a really good job. So I'm going to say find the next occurrence of GreenShot. And sure enough, over here, I have a folder for GreenShot, which is probably, and as you can see, telling me where it's installed. Uh, this one actually has where the help link is, the uninstall information of GreenShot. If I want to see if there's any more references, I can F3 again, and I'm going to catch a lot of them in this particular section. So now that I leave it, I'll see if there's anywhere else in the registry that there might have been a reference to GreenShot. So occasionally you want to install something. If you still see a reference to it, you might have to come in and remove that reference. You can see right now that it is in my user settings and F3 again, it's in that user because this particular program was installed for all the users on this particular computer. So it was across the board. All right, so these are the major elements of the registry. Again, the most important thing I can stress to you is export it out first before you make any changes and uh, follow whatever instructions you have when changing the registry, especially when you're looking at uh, register word or D words and other formats that you're not really familiar with. Okay, so we're gonna stop here and we're gonna take a look at how to view the registry from PowerShell. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at the two command line methods of viewing and or possibly changing the registry from the console. The first one is the reg command. Now the reg command can be run in the Windows command prompt or it can be run through Windows PowerShell. So if I just simply type reg space slash question mark, that's going to give me the help of how I can actually view or use the reg command. So if I wanted to look at a specific key, I can go reg query, query of course means to ask, and I want to query HKLM. Now HKLM stands for HKEY local machine, and we saw that previously on the video. And perhaps I want to query a subhive of here called current control set services and the spooler, which of course is for printing. And now you can see I'm actually getting the binary information, or it's not quite binary, because you see that there's numbers other than zeros and ones, 
but some of the specific information related to that particular um, hive or registry key rather from the the hive of HK local machine. Now what we're going to do now is look at how do we view this information from PowerShell. So let me clear the screen and if you recall PowerShell uses what are called providers. So if I type get PS provider and enter that shows me the different modes or focus that PowerShell is using. Right now we are focusing on the file system because I'm in the provider of C colon, so I'm in the file system provider. So if I want to go over to the registry provider, I can either change my focus to H key local machine or H key current user. So to do that, the quickest way is to go CD space H key LM colon, and that's going to take me right over to the H key local machine. Another way I can do that, let me just go CDC colon back and show you. I can also use the Windows PowerShell command called set location, and I could say H key LM colon, oops, LM colon and enter, and it does the same thing. So personally, I think it's a lot easier to use the shortcut of CD, but either one does the same thing. Now, if I want to see what's under here, if you remember, get child item is like saying DER directory. And I can see that I am looking at the child item of H key local machine. If I wanted to go down, I can do set location again, or I can say CD software and then run my up arrow again. And now I can see the software CD Microsoft. And again, and so there are other commands that you can do inside of PowerShell with the registry. Uh, I can do, get item property, set an item property. I can also uh, use the reg command to import or export my registry uh, through there. This is one time where PowerShell doesn't have all the methods and that's where the reg command can be useful, especially for doing an import and an export. Great way to put it inside a script or into a batch file. So again, don't change anything in the registry if you're not familiar with what you're doing, but if you do want to try something, I highly recommend you do it in a isolated and sandbox environment, or at the very least back up or export that registry, either the whole thing or the particular hive and make sure it's something that you can access should your computer not boot correctly. I don't want to scare you, but again, when you make a change, it's instantaneous. There's no saving as you go out. So that is your quick look today of the Windows registry.